Well, hello, everyone. This is Gene Trowbridge of the Trowbridge Law Group with another episode of TLG Talks, where I interview people who are involved in the securities uh, syndication business, people who are syndicators, people who like to be syndicators, people who don't want to be syndicators, and service providers to uh, the industry. Uh, today, we're going to be talking to uh, Lance Peterson with Veravest up in uh, the Pacific Northwest. And before he, he comes on, I, I have to tell him that uh, one of the reasons I stopped being a syndicator and went off to law school is because one year I, I sent out uh, 1,676 K-1s and I was taking care of over 850 investors and there were no companies like yours around. So we had to do it totally by ourselves. And I just thought I had, uh, that's when I coined the phrase, the care and maintenance of partners is overwhelming. Yeah. So Lance, why don't you tell us what Veribest does? Sure. Yeah, so back in 2013, uh, we saw much of the same uh, what Gene experienced and, and, and it came from a similar place, right? So we, we ourselves were fund managers and syndicators and um, we were investing with, with others as limited partners and you know, became frustrated with the, the lack of reporting and, and getting the things on time. And we saw sort of a need there and um, began providing you know, that service to, to others. And I really we ran with that and um, it took off. And, and so since that time, you know, we've, uh, I guess we'll call it, you know, $1.9 billion in uh, assets under administration later we, you know, it's really a problem that we've, we've fallen in love with and are, uh, you know, really driven to sort of solve, right. To remove the friction that, that Gene was talking about and allow, um, really to allow the, the, the real estate deal sponsors to focus on the important things like building a robust pipeline of acquisition opportunities, you know, underwriting deals, and then executing their, their business plans to, you know, add value and, and generate, you know, uh, above average risk adjusted returns. So fundamentally we're a, we're a back office and middle office uh, service provider administrator. We do you know, accounting and, and bookkeeping and uh, waterfall calculations. And we have a partnership tax practice. And so we're really trying to be the one-stop shop for uh, whether you're, you know, just starting out as a, as a uh, doing syndicating your first sort of multifamily deal or whether you, you know you're actually doing full-blown blind pool funds and everything in between all right so if i came to you and i was a first-time syndicator could you help me yeah we, we can i think that's one of the other things that we've done is really lowered the barrier to entry um you know a lot of this stuff, I mean, I think that's at the heart of it, right? Is that there's, it, you know, to, to do it on your own, right? Like you start out and you find a property to, to Gene's point earlier. I mean, you, <clears throat> there's so many things that you have to do. So what, what we've built here is in the market right now, you have a lot of um, software as a service providers who provide you know, investor portal software that helps onboard investors and things like that. Um, you know, we've built our, our own, but what we do is we, we bring the humans to, right? So I, I think that it's about staff augmentation and just having those resources that, you know, understand all of these, you know, uh, investor accreditation, you know, issues with the SEC, you know, with the 506C stuff, all the anti-money laundering, OFAC, you know, know your client sort of checks, um, you know, all the issues with like custodial accounts, IRAs, you know, all these things that aren't really, I mean, they really have nothing to do with real estate per se, right? They have a lot to do with more of the, the investment side of the house. So we have, you know, so if you come to us and you've got your first deal, you know, we, we basically say, you know, the, the, the deal itself is going to be the one who engages us. And we make it really simple where it's, you know, the, the monthly fee is just predicated on the number of investors in the deal, and you can get started right away, right? And then you can engage us to do the tax work as well and, you know, produce those K-1s and upload them to the, the portal and, you know, handle all those things. So really you can, can grow and scale with this variable cost, which is really more of a deal cost instead of having to go and, you know, hire a bunch of people and buy software and uh, find another CPA. So yeah, you, you can be small or big. 
you know, it works for, for everyone. So if, if my first deal was a 506C offering, mm -hmm. you would handle the investor verification process too? Yeah, you... so, yep, yeah. As investor is, you know, they go, so everyone has their own white labeled investor portal. So investors can go and make their commitment. You know, if it's $50,000 minimum, they can make the $50,000 commitment, enter in all their information. And then when they get to the step where we need to verify their accreditation, they can upload their form letter from their CPA or, you know, attorney or investment advisor, or they can, you know, upload evidence of accredited status, whether that's their, you know, tax returns and we can run a credit report, um, you know, if it's on an asset or net worth basis, you know, or upload your like I said, tax returns on an income basis. And our representatives will sort of handle that process on behalf of the sponsor. So you don't have to... Are, are my investors wouldn't have to leave you and go to a third party mm -hmm. verification company. You can do it right there. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's how we used to do it. But what we learned is, is there's so much friction with that. Um, it's kind of a bad uh, investor experience. So, you know, for us, we've just found that it was easier for our, our personnel to handle that. Um, and, uh, it just makes it easier. So we, we call it, it was sort of an accidental service, but we have also that, and we call it investor assist where some people just aren't super tech savvy, right? So uh, one of our clients, investors can book a time with one of our investor services representatives and they'll actually walk them through the subscription process and Great. kind of fill it out for them. So so that way it takes the burden off of the, the syndicator and, and, and kind of moves it to, you know, our team who's obviously does this all day long and and uh, can help the investor through that process. So it's not so frustrating. So if I had a 506C, and I'm gonna to get to 506B in a minute, but if I had a 506C, do you have a, uh, a database of accredited investors who are just waiting to see my deal? Yeah, we do actually. Um, <clears throat> so that was a service we launched last year. Um, we have a, a sponsor directory where we basically created a new membership. We, we've structured it as a membership program for deal sponsors, you know, syndicators, fund managers, where if, if the principals of the firm pass a background check, we'll invite you to become a member and you can create a profile on veravest.com. And, and then, you know, you become Veravest verified and, and we're basically driving traffic from you know, passive investors, we're, we're driving that traffic to the site. And from the investor's perspective, it's a couple of things. One, it allows them to see who's active in the market, right? If they're looking for a multifamily syndicator in the Southeast, they can filter the directory to kind of narrow it down. You know, if they're looking for someone who's doing uh, multi-tenant industrial or self-storage or mobile home parks or whatever they're looking for, they can kind of narrow down the universe. And then they can know that, um, you know, that these people have been sort of you know, had some pre-vetting done, right? In terms of the, the background checks, you know, they haven't committed fraud or been, you know, uh, barred by the SEC. They don't have any personal or business bankruptcies in the last seven mm -hmm. years, no felony criminal convictions. And then we also have a track record verification service. That's the other big part, right? It's difficult for, you know, your average high net worth investor to sort of verify that the claims that are being made um, are accurate. And as Gene knows, being in the securities business, you know, that's a big, big no-no, right? It's sort of misrepresentation, but I think it's a really big problem in the, in the industry. There's a lot of guys I don't think that really understand, you know, the gravity of the situation to, of, of misrepresenting <laughs> themselves, right? And claiming they've done things they've never done. Uh, and so to kind of clean that up and make it easier for investors to kind of know, you know, who's out there, we, we provide that as a service. So the sponsors pay us a fee to kind of verify their track record and then they can display that on their, their, uh, their profile. And then the last piece that we do is we offer a monitoring service where any deal that's listed on our platform is an open opportunity, like a syndication you could invest in. Uh, those sponsors have to engage us to monitor that deal on an ongoing basis. So basically we make sure that all the money's going where it's supposed to go and that all the fees are calculated, you know, correctly. And, you know, basically no sort of, funny business is going on post-investment. And there's also sort of the other forcing function is that they, they have to submit 
all that financial information on a quarterly basis to us in order for us to provide that service. So if they're delinquent, it shows up as an anomaly and kind of a ding on their profile. Cause that's the big other big frustration. I think a lot of passive investors have in the space is just that the communication is just subpar at times. And, and, and unfortunately some syndicators, you know, they go dark and they, they kind of forget to like let the LPs and the investors know what's going on and it drives investors crazy. So for us this way, it's, they're sort of being held to a higher standard, a little more accountability to actually at least be um, providing updates on at least a quarterly basis. So when you're talking about betting, doing some light betting of the sponsors, do you have any um, benchmarks of uh, how many deals a sponsor has done before you accept them? Uh, the dollar amount of the assets under management, yeah. uh, things like that? Yeah, great question. So. We really don't. I mean, I think that what we've done is said, okay, as long as you're you're not a crook or a bad guy, you're you're welcome to join uh, the the uh, Veribest sponsored network. With with that being said, one of the first things we do when people become members is that we verify how much existing capital they have under management. You know, how 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 much capital has been entrusted to you, right? That you are managing. And we, we force them to sort of provide us with documentation to verify that. And the whole directory is driven by what we call investor capital managed, but it'd be like, you know, equity capital under management, um, you know, because people use leverage. Some people don't use leverage, right? So we just feel like that's sort of the, 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 uh, the fair way to kind of, you know, judge people. So anytime you would filter the directory or search for anything in the directory, the, the, the firms that have the most investor capital managed show up and rank higher than those who have less, you know, and I guess for me, it just feels like one, it's social proof Two, it, it does, it is so much demonstrates, you know, if you're able to continue to get people to entrust you with, with their money and you're, you're willing to undergo a background check and have those results be public and hold yourself accountable to the ongoing monitoring of your deals, it's a higher level of transparency. So that's what we're more focused on. You know, as you know, Gene, I mean, th these investments have risk, right? That's how they're able to generate, you know, double digit returns. I mean, there's, there's, there's risk that you have to take on. And especially as a limited partner, you don't have control, right? And so you're abdicating all of that decision making and, you know, day to day operations to some other party. Um, and, and so for us, you know, we don't pick and choose the deals, right? I think, that the way I look at it is that that's sort of what investors need. That's their job, right? But so we remove a lot of the things that I think cause friction from making that because you're so hung up on, are these good guys or bad guys? Are they doing the right thing? Am I investing in a Ponzi scheme? And you lose sight of like, you should be underwriting the deal. Like, is this a good deal? Do you believe in this business plan? Do you believe that they can, you know, execute this? Do you believe they're capable of executing it? Um, and that's sort of what we want to help, you know, passive investors just, get better at doing that job because it's just, you know, and we've already, we've seen this obviously over the years where we moved from a, a society that relied on pensions, um, you know, and your employer is sort of your retirement to then, you know, the sort of IRA 401k, you know, like it's up to you to save for your retirement. Right. And I think that if everyone, if people are being honest with themselves, they, they kind of went from the pension sort of side to just abdicating, you know, the management of their wealth to some other party, you know, usually investment advisors or wealth managers who, <laughs> you know, haven't really done the greatest job, you know what I mean? And so I, I think that we're all, we, we all should take the, the act of investing our own, you know, retirement, our own retirement financial futures sort of in our own hands. So that's the kind of stuff that I'm really passionate about promoting is just we all need to learn. We're all investors and we need to learn to become better investors and, you know, completely abdicating that kind of stuff to some other party, you know, in my opinion, isn't really the greatest strategy. Um, it's okay to get some help, but I don't think you should entirely just hand it over to somebody else. No, I agree with you. One of the things I've been preaching for the last year, as I see my sponsors, we do quite a bit of, we do quite a bit of work with sponsors as I see them maybe moving off from multifamily into mobile home parks or self-storage, 
uh, and taking their investors with them, I have been promoting that the investors should get educated in the asset class. The sponsor, the syndicator, is not going to educate you in the asset class globally. They're going to talk to you about their deal. But you need to know, like I do some work with um, an organization that teaches you uh, investing in mobile home parks. Yeah. And when they do their, uh, when they do their training, uh, they have a whole half day where they videoed a tour of a manufacturing plant to show you how a coach is built. Yep. Well, if I was going to invest in, uh, in a mobile home park, I'd kind of want to know what that thing is that's sitting on that piece of concrete. Yep. <laughs> and, and, and what trouble am I in if I own it or yep. if I mint lease it or, or whatever. So I think, I think that's important. And then I always say to the, the sponsors that there's, there's four questions that I think an, uh, an investor should ask you. And the first one is, is Lance, if uh, I like your deal, if I give you the $50,000 you're asking for, what happens if something happens to you? Yep. And I think that's the number one question. And I won't write an offering if the manager uh, isn't an entity with uh, multiple people. Two people might be fine. Five yep. people might be better. But one person, I mean, you know, we've been through a period of COVID where people have died. I've had people die before COVID or get mm -hmm. sued or get divorced or go bankrupt. And they're all alone and all the investors taken on the chin. Yep. So I think that's a bad question. But the second question I always say you should ask is, hey, Lance, have you done this before? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, I, and I always say, you know, you've got to do I don't care if it's a small deal. You've got to get your first deal done. So when you're asked that, you say, sure, I have once. Well, that's all you need. You need to have it done once. And that, that's a start. So when someone comes to you and you ask them that question, hey, have you done this before? And they say, no. I know there are other companies out there like yours who, wouldn't, who would not touch a first-time syndicator. Mm -hmm. They just, they just wouldn't if that's their policy. But I've nurtured uh, some really good syndicators from number one. I, I have one company that's done 128 deals with me since 2014. I did their first deal. Yep. And uh, they're great. So yeah, there's no, nothing I'm, wrong. That's right. I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I, I obviously am. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a get rich slowly kind of business and everyone's got to start yeah. someplace. Right. And, and, and that is what I, and, and this is where you see Eugene, right. A lot of that misrepresentation is sort of the insecurity of many of the um, emerging uh, sponsors, right. Is that in, in they're embarrassed by it or like, Oh, I haven't done anything yet. And I'm just like, you know, but okay. Yeah. But like, that's with anything in life, right. Like until right. you do it once, then, then, I mean, it's just, you got to start someplace. So, there's, there's no reason why you should, you should hide from it, right? In fact, I do know a lot of investors who look for those emerging managers because they know they're hungry, they got something to prove, you know, there's a lot of things. And, and, and the thing that I've seen, and you've probably seen it too, Gene, over the last five or six years is that there's been a lot more cooperation amongst the participants in, in the space. I, I feel like, you know, eight or nine, 10 years ago, it just felt like much more competitive. Like everybody was sort of like each man, for himself, right? And and but but now the beauty of it is, is that if you are trying to get in the space, you can invest as an LP, you know, you can you can sort of tag along with another group who's been doing it longer and kind of learn from them. And right. you know, there's a lot of ways to sort of to get involved. And and that's what we're really trying to do is just to make that part more transparent. Because to me, if if you're out there and you're hungry and and and, and you really get after it and you can find a deal that's worth doing, I mean, that's where it starts. Right. And there are ways to sort of, if you find a deal that pencils, that makes sense, that, that you've got a business plan. And to your point, Gene, like you, you put a team around you, you find other people that can help you because it's, it's a team sport. Right. And so it, 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 that's what you're looking. I mean, as, as, I mean, this is what I say to investors all the time too, is just saying, look for people like it's the team matters. Right. And if it is just a solo Joe or one man show, 
that it's whether they're super experienced or whether they started yesterday, it's a, it can be a bit of a problem because there's a lot of, there's a lot of jobs and roles, right. To make that, to make right. it work and to do it on your own is extremely difficult. Um, and so, you know, th- that would be sort of a red flag to me, just like it is to you. I'd be like, who else is involved? I mean, you're going to do everything. It just doesn't seem practical. No, it's, uh, it's amazing. Well, you say that you have, uh, the staff to do some of the accounting over the last year I've done Mm-hmm. six or eight uh, educational um, events virtually for um, CPA organizations. Yeah. And uh, one of the questions I ask them is, you know, typically when do your syndicator clients come to you for advice? And by God, more often than not, they say, well, right around the tax time. Yeah. Well, you know, that's kind of too late. It's too late. We need to get those get some tax uh, input into the offering documents. Uh, the, the same thing is uh, during this period of time, I had syndicators call me and say, gee, I've got a client who there's been a death and, and we wanna know what do we do with the, with the asset? And I said, well, you know, what you do with the asset, what you said you were gonna do with the asset when you chose yeah. community property, joint tenants, the yeah. trust, IRR, that decision was made up front, mm-hmm. you know, and then, and then the smart guys say, well, I want to, how do I tell my, my clients what, in what method should they take title? And I say, you don't, they should go to, they should go to their advisor who knows about taking title today means something five years from now, totally. if something goes wrong. The last thing we ran into, which I thought was interesting is, a um, person died and all their money was in their IRA and the um, custodian would not tell us who the beneficiary was because of privacy rules. Hmm. We're stuck. We had to go out and, and, and find next to kin and figure if anyone knew that. Yep. So my, now my subscription agreement looks a little different than it did uh, yeah, Six capture the benny. Yeah, that. capture the beneficiary. Yeah, most Isn't definitely. That's an interesting, an yeah. interesting deal. No, well, I, th- yeah, I agree, and that's why we added the tax practice, Gene. Was that that you real estate investing and tax go hand in hand? I mean, because mm-hmm. they're in a partnership structure. So, you know, to to, I mean, you it has to be part of the process. You know, you've got you need you need securities counsel to draft these things because you're going to be using exemption from registration, right? If you're syndicating, that's 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 what it means, right? And the other part of it is that th- this is a partnership and it has tax implications, right? And yeah, waiting waiting until after you've done the deal or whatever and the year's over and all those things before you talk to someone's too late. And so that's really where we've realized, like, we need to be adding value as far upstream. Like when, when, when you're getting involved, Gene, we, we need to, we need to be at that table too, having those discussions, right? Because it's part of the business plan. It should be. You know, in the last couple of weeks, Lance, I, I've done three, three YouTube uh, lectures, if you would, myself, all from questions that have come during tax season. Um, Mm -hmm depreciation, yep. the passive loss rule, and capital accounts. Because people are told, boy, we're going to use cost segregation and you're going to get, you know, your share is going to be $300,000 of uh, depreciation. Well, they think that's going to shelter $300,000 of their annual income. Mm-hmm. And so we, we, we need to tell the people that that depreciation shelters the income from the property first. That's right. And then if there's anything left over, maybe, because then I got the passive loss rules. Exactly. It said you're a passive investor. It doesn't help you unless you have passive income. Right. That's right. That's right. And so people are upset. They made these investments like the old day. Know. You know, I used to invest in the, uh, or syndicate during, you know, three to one, four to one, five, five to one write off days. Mm, yeah. And if you put a hundred thousand dollars in, you'd get five hundred thousand dollars right up, way before '86, the '86 Act. So it's a, it's a change, and people don't know that. I don't think the, 
I don't think the sponsors know that. I don't. Yeah. And, that, and that's, you're right, Gene. And that's the sort of stuff where they, they're out there. It's again, they, they become misrepresentations because they're telling people that yep. they're telling people that up front as part of like selling the deal. And it's like, unless those people, like you said, have other passive income, which more often than not, I mean, it, it, they, they, there's a good chance they may not, or they're a real estate professional, right? Per the IRS definition, it, it just, it's just carried forward. It, it, it doesn't, it, it, you know, I mean, maybe it offsets a hundred percent of that, that the, like you said, the income in that particular deal, um, but it, it ends there. So yeah, th- those, that's, I mean, those things go hand in hand and, and, uh, and like you said, in all cases, and, and even because I think a lot of passive investors, LPs, they, they think they can turn to the sponsor to answer these tax questions. To your point, it, it, it's this is, I mean, the beauty of the partnerships, all the stuff is passing through. It's going to go until it hits a human, you know, with an SSN at some point, right? So you need to, you know, you, it, it, everyone's situation is different. That's right. That, that, that is. Well, this has been great, Lance. If some, I have one more question to ask you, but before I do, if someone wants to um, interview your company because they might be interested in using them, uh, what's the contact information, or, or is the website? I've been to your website, and your you know your press kit is spectacular. First of all, yeah. I've been to your website, and I see all the people that are on your website. Where would I go if I wanted to interview you or company to see if we're a match? Yeah, I mean, you can go to verivest.com and, and, and connect with us there. That's probably, you know, the easiest, you know, you can email me at lance at verivest.com. But, you know, those are the, the, the quickest ways to sort of to, to get a hold of us. And we can, you know, direct you to the right people from there. But, but yeah, I mean, yeah, feel free to reach out. Happy to be help, helpful. Okay. All right. So my last question is that I, I, I warned you about what piece of advice would you give to a rookie? in this business. Yeah, I mean, the piece of advice that I give to everyone who's emerging is that don't underestimate how important building a brand around what you do is. I, I, I really feel like that is the most often overlooked thing that people think they can just sort of roll some week. I mean, if you're going to get into this business, then at least take the time to pick a name, you know, you're something capital management, you know, you, you are something, it's, it's a, it's its own business. So, so don't treat it like it's some just random hobby or whatever. It's cause it's not, you're either in it or you're not. And if you're going to syndicate, that means that you're going to attempt to convince other people to, to invest money into a deal that you're managing, right? It, it, it's, it's inherent. So don't, don't skimp on the branding side of it, right? Like stand for something, have conviction, get a logo, pick a color scheme, spend just a few dollars on a website that looks the part, right? And, 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 you know, that's when I say brand is what I mean. Like you've, you've, you've got to stand for something, even if it is just like a lot of other people, you just, you, you're, you're bullish on multifamily syndications in the Southeast, like join the club. That's okay. Right. It's like, that, that's okay to be that, but don't, but just say that and say why you're convicted by multifamily. It, it's okay you know, to I'm, say the same thing as other people. I talk to people all the time and when, when they're be they're just coming in and I said, okay, what do you, what are you going to call your manager entity? Well, we hadn't thought about it. Well, I said, this is the, you've got to brand it. I was Trover Equity Group Inc. Yeah. 16 times. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So everything was Trover Equity Fund One, Trover Equity Barstow, Trover Equity Portland. Yes. Uh, where, you know, it was, it was me. Now, I don't know if I would, if I did it again today, if I would use my name, but that's all I had when I started. Yep. I had a reputation and I needed, well, what can I build on? Well, my reputation. So I picked my name. Yeah. Fine. Didn't bother me, but, but I, I can see that's another issue. You know, I really love that answer. And I think that's very important. Uh, most of the answers I've had, and you gave the answer about 10 minutes ago, most of the answers there are, this isn't a do-it-alone business. You have to build a team. Well, that team goes right with your branding. It does. You, you, you said the team before, and now you're saying branding. So you're just not going to make it, in my opinion, in this uh, complicated, competitive world as a standalone guy, lady, syndicator. You're just not going to make it. 
you're not gonna you're you are you are you are not you're and you, and you won't go far it's uh yeah. you, you need you need to accumulate a team mm-hmm. that complements one another it doesn't need a huge team but a couple and, and that's what's exciting you can build two to three person teams that can with with once again with services like us that exist and like gene just you put a few you know service provider professionals around you know a team of two or three people you can really make it happen but on your own well, i've told a, i've told a lot of people on a lot of interviews that I've done, if there were back office companies like there are today, I don't know if I would have left uh, if I would have left the business because yeah. I was, you know, I had a good deal. The broker dealers were raising money for me. It was all. It was just, it was just a, a choice of doubling office space and doubling personnel and all that. And I said, "Hell, I'll, I'll just go to law school." Yeah. So that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so very, very, very much. This has been our interview with Lance Peterson with Veravest. And you can see on the screen their website. And you can just uh, go to their website and reach out and interview them and see if they're the right company to help you do all the things that a syndicator needs uh, needs help with. All right. So, thank you very much for your time, Lance. Oh, thank you, Gene. As always, good to catch up. Okay, bye.